We're at historic Martinsville Speedway for the fourth installment of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on speed. One driver has almost 30 years of history on this very track, and he's looking to make more today. You see, I, I'm just a good old boy from Kentucky. And, and just think of the things I've gotten to do. Let me tell you, there's nothing like being behind the wheel of a racing machine. Right in the middle of all of it. Winning races. Oh, I won the Daytona 500. I won the Daytona 500. Man, I just can't wait to get behind the wheel of that truck. Right in the middle of it. Right in the middle of all those veterans. Right in the middle of those young guns. <laughs> Show those young bucks a thing or two. <laughs> right in the middle of Martinsville. Let's go racing. Boogity, boogity, boogity. It's the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 on speed. Here's our pre race show presented by Craftsman. And one of the most famous drivers in all of NASCAR is down on pit road right now. Let's go talk to him with Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. And you know what? He's got one of the brightest trucks today in the field. Old number 17 is back here at Martinsville. 84 times in his career, Darrell Waltrip went to victory lane in a NASCAR Winston Cup race. And DW, 11 of those happened here at Martinsville. So I wonder how special a day would it be today if you were able to win at your old favorite Martinsville in the Craftsman Trucks? Well, Ray, you know, I think uh, once an athlete, always an athlete. You're always looking for mountains to climb, things to do that you've never done before. I haven't won a craftsman truck race uh i had uh rich bickle you know in my truck and we almost won the championship and he actually sat on pole and won the race here in 1997 so uh i'd like to win one just so i could put that on my resume it's a it's a blank right now i have run in this series and i haven't won and i don't like that are you good enough to win today well i think so uh i know the truck is you know i i just tippy toed out of the tv booth to come down here and do this so uh it's, going, it's hotter than I thought it was going to be, and uh, it'll be a little tough physically, but I think I can run 250 laps. Heck, I used to run 500 here all the time, so it's like a heat race. Okay, make sure you have a good time out there. Darrell Waltrip is in, in a great truck today, guys. This truck came from Hendrick Motorsports. Jack Sprague won nine of his 23 career wins in this exact truck. They call it Bud Light, and DW is in her today. Phil? Ray, I'm standing by with our pole sitter, Ted Musgrave. Ted, you've always run well here. You had two second place finishes in a Winston Cup car. You, you finished 22nd and 24th here the last two years. Had you have had a top two finish in both of those races, you, you would have already had two championships. Can you get the mechanical gremlins away and run this thing all day? Well, that's kind of what Gene and I were just talking about, that you know, we, unforeseen things happened to us the last two years, and we've been on the pole each time with a fast truck, so this time I'm just going to take a little more patience to try and be there and try and get rid of them 24th place finishes, because this truck needs to be in the top five for sure. Ted Graham, Ted Musgrave trying to get this truck and keep it up front for the entire race. Let's go back upstairs to Rick. Thanks, Bill. Let's take a look at the four top ten point standings here. Bobby Hamilton winning at Darlington. Rick Crawford winning at Daytona. Another guy who's had a win and brought him into the top ten is the number 46 of Dennis Setzer, who won last or last month at Mesa Marin, and so he moves into the top ten. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen, and as we saw in the top 10 point standings there was a couple veterans up top and joining me a couple veterans in the booth veteran race driver Dorsey Schrader and veteran crew chief Barry Dotson and Barry this is a track where a crew chief almost has a microscope on him as far as setting these trucks up this track is tough it has a paper clip design it's got long straightaways it's got concrete corners it's got a lot of grip but it's hard on everything you got to have a great motor with a lot of torque guys you got to have thirty thousand dollars worth of brakes to get this thing stopped you got to take care of your sheet metal it's tough on rear ends it's tough on transmissions it's tough on everything it's even tough on drivers hey talk about drivers what about me it's really hot in this truck. You ran your 250 degree oil lines right through the middle of my truck. Now, I'm burning my floorboard, I'm burning my foot on the floorboard, I'm burning my leg over on a transmission tunnel, and what do you want from me? 250 laps around a half mile track, 
run 130 mile an hour down the straightaway, go through the corner every time, five wide sometimes, five wide a lot, but it can happen <laughs> around here. It's going to be a ball club. It's, it's going to be something. It's going to be exciting. And Barry talks about tough trucks. Dorsey right talks about tough drivers. It's going to be hot in the driver's seat here at Martinsville. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 is brought to you by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR and the NHRA, and by Wolverine Durashocks, the most comfortable boots and shoes guaranteed. Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia for the Advanced Auto Parts 250 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed, being presented by Craftsman. We look at the weather here, beautiful day for racing, 68 degrees and sunny. It's going to be a gorgeous day for us here at Martinsville Speedway. Well, a guy who knows how tough this track is, is of course Darrell Waltrip. Darrell Waltrip having a very impressive, not only NASCAR career, but also very impressive Martinsville career. Three-time Winston Cup champion and Daytona 500 winner, Darrell Waltrip has enjoyed a storied and successful NASCAR career with 809 Winston Cup starts, 59 poles, and 84 victories to his credit, Old DW certainly stands among NASCAR's elite. And dances among NASCAR's elite, as you see there. We take a look at the Martinsville Master, again mentioning 52 starts, eight poles, 11 wins here on this track, 27 top five finishes, 31 top 10 finishes right here at Martinsville. Very impressive. His best finish in a truck happened right here also at Martinsville, and that was a fifth place finish. Now, a guy who's somewhat following in his footsteps, not only on the track, but also off the track, is a guy by the name of Kevin Harvick. And we go down track side with Ray Dunlap. Well, Kevin Harvick won a year ago at Phoenix, and this is the exact same truck he used to do. As a matter of fact, this is his favorite, and he doesn't let anybody else drive this one. But, Kevin, you're back here at Martinsville, and uh, we had some fans sitting up in the grandstands had a real nice banner for you. Did you get to see that? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Uh, they're looking out for me, so uh, that's pretty cool. And You know, we're just uh, we're here to have fun today and hopefully have a chance at winning a race and trying to get some more orange paint on our front bumper. Well, pretty crazy deal a year ago here. You uh, were involved in the truck series race here, got into an incident with Coy Gibbs, and, and tempers kind of went their way, and when it was all done, you didn't get the race on Sunday. So what in the world are you doing back here in a truck series race at Martinsville? Well, I mean, I like to race, and, and this is what I do. And, you know, lessons are learned, and you go on with it. But uh, as you know, I'm not scared to do anything. So uh, we're back here to have fun and, and race the truck, and I enjoy racing in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and just... Uh, coming out here and having a good time. So uh, Daryl and I are hopefully going to move up, move forward a little bit, and, and uh, have fun today. Okay, that's Kevin Harvick. He starts right behind Daryl Waltrip. You know, Harvick was an interesting situation a year ago here, but when you look back on the history of this racetrack, there have been some awfully good races. Today, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series makes their ninth visit to one of NASCAR's most historic tracks, Virginia's Martinsville Speedway. In the series' first visit in 1995, Joe Rutman took top honors for team owners Ernie Irvin and Mark Simo. Mike Skinner bagged the victory the following year for owner Richard Childress. In 1997, Rich Bickle led from the pole and was first to the line in a truck owned by Darrell Waltrip. Richard Childress again found himself in victory lane after Jay Sauter took the checkered in 1998. Driving for Richard Petty, Jimmy Hensley showed us where the dance floor was in 1999. Current series favorite Bobby Hamilton bested the field two years ago. 2001 saw Scott Briggs in victory lane, driving for owner Jim Smith. And last year it was short track ace Dennis Setzer doing what he does best. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway. Here we are earlier, and that's Kevin Harvick right behind Darrell Walter. Up! Oh! And that's just a preview of what's to come. Let's take a look at the U.S. Army's starting grid. On the pole for the second time here in two years, that is Ted Musgrave. And outside of him, driving, winning his first truck race right here at Martinsville, Bobby Hamilton. Inside of row two, best Martinsville finish of second is Travis Quapple. 
And outside of Travis, winner as an owner and crew chief, he qualified fourth, but will have to move to the back of the field because of an engine change. That was Andy Petrie. Dennis Setzer won here last year from the 33rd starting position. He'll start fifth. And outside of him, starting sixth with three Martinsville and a best finish of eighth, David Starr. Starting seventh, he won an all-pro event here at Martinsville in 95, Rick Crawford. And outside of him, with 25 starts, 17 top 10 finishes, is Robert Presley. Row five brings in a couple fellow Missourians. Ken Schrader, Winston Cup veteran, alongside the outstanding rookie of the year this year so far, Carl Edwards. Great job. Row six, the man sitting third in points is Brendan Gaughan. And next to him, the man who won 11 Winston Cup races here, Darrell Walter. Let's try to talk to him. Hey, DW, this is Dorsey at the Speed Booth. You got me, bud? Hey man, we're all real excited. Uh, is your old ticker going to hold out for 250 laps today? <laughs> well, it's a little warmer than I thought it was going to be. I was hoping it'd kind of keep that cloudy and overcast, but uh, everybody's done a really good job. I got a, I got the uh, cool box in here. I got water in here, and uh, you know, my my favorite saying is, "Don't worry about the mule, just load the wagon." And uh, I think they've loaded the wagon up pretty good for the old mule, so we just have to see how he does. Hey, we saw a little love tap from uh, Mr. Harvick behind you there. What do you think about that? I don't think that's the last one I'll get. <laughs> all right, man. Have a good day today, all right? I just and we want could... to thank everybody that's worked really hard, Bobby Kennedy and everybody over there, and Jeff and Larry and uh, Michael. Everybody's really done a good job of getting us out here today, and I'm proud of them. And thank Todd for sponsoring us. Technology is spectacular. We'll be able to talk with not only DW, but a couple other guys that will be uh, helping him out, I guess you would say, during the race. And we see the final rows here filled with provisionals. TJ Bell and Dana White moves into the 93. He didn't qualify there. You'll see here in the graphic that shows missing the field, one of the big names there is Tina Gordon. She was the Raybestos Rookie of the Year leading contender, and she was not able to make the field. But you see Dana White's name on there, but he is actually driving the 93 today. So he steps into the 93 for uh, Ron Roland Isaacs. Let's head down to the pit road and Phil Parsons. Hey, not only is Bobby Hamilton a former Truck Series winner here, he's a former Winston Cup Series winner here, but he's got a couple other things going for him. He's got Dave Blaney's Jasper team pitting the truck today, and he's also got some good luck charms on his dashboard from Mrs. Smith's first grade class in, Port in Troutman, North Carolina, so he's got a lot of first graders pulling for Bobby Hamilton today. Ray? Well, Phil, I think there's one thing that's going to be a key factor today, and that's pit selection, and I think Dennis Setzer probably has the very best one. He's right here in the middle of pit road but the really great thing is when he takes off and leaves with his truck this pit stall is open the next pit stall is open so he's got an easy access about on back out onto the pit road there's only two stalls down here the very first one and the one that Setzer has that are really good stalls and we take a look at the Axiom Chevrolet number 46 there of Dennis Setzer as they get in line We'll be on board with a few different trucks today, and the first one being Jason Leffler in the ASC Dodge number two. He starts in 25th. Obviously, we'll be on board with old DW. He's starting in 10th position in the Tide number 17. The Federated Auto Parts number 52 of Ken Schrader will also carry us as viewers along this half mile racetrack. And up front, we will be with Bobby Hamilton, who starts second just on the outside of Ted Musgrave. You know what? We got to keep our eyes on people like Andy Petrie. Lost an engine very fast, didn't get any happy hour, but he had to go to the back. Jason Leffer, another bad qualifying run. Look for him to move up also. Yeah, Jason drove his second lap, which has been the quickest lap. He drove it down on the apron. It just got away from him. The wedge went up the racetrack a little bit, and uh, he didn't get what he wanted. He's desperate to get up to the front fast. Ultra Motorsports, we took a look there at Jason Leffler. Ultra Motorsports has had very uh, impressive starting positions all year long. And again, Ultra Motorsports' Ted Musgrave is up front now, and he has the opportunity to win from the pole and win the Craftsman Win From The Pole Award, which is a $10,000 more or less bonus that goes to the team if Ted Musgrave is able to win from the pole. That'll help pay for the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> you had mentioned earlier $30,000 in brakes. I mean, we're talking about a very tough track to tame. You know, 
know, I started right behind Kenny Schrader or next to Kenny Schrader and um, getting to race with guys like Kevin Harvick and Daryl Waltrip and, uh, you know, like Brendan Gaughan and Matt Crafton and these guys that I've heard of and, and watched for years, it's it's an honor. I mean, it's it's really interesting. Uh, plays with your brain a little bit. You know, you're thinking that's Daryl Waltrip right there, you know. We've got Team DW with us, Larry Mack, Jeff Hammond, and we're going to be on board with them and listen to them. Seems all right. Good to know, good to know. Larry Mack's going to be spotting. Jeff okay, Hammond will be DW, the Okay, DW, like I've been telling you for a little over two years in the broadcast booth, but take me serious this time. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Make sure those switches are up, buddy. That's it for Larry Mack. Switches are all on, going down the back, headed for turn three, and a green go, go. Pace truck is off, coming to the green. 10-4, got that. Pace truck's off. All right, driver, let's be ready now. Be on your toes, nice and smooth start. Be ready. Be ready. Easy. Easy. Easy now. Easy. Boogie, 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 baby, go get him. The second most famous words being stated there by Jeff Hammond as they stay too wide as they go down the back stretch and into turns three and four. Yeah, right now these trucks are on very low air pressure. It's taking them a while to get going. You saw Travis Quapple beating the back bumper off Musgrave. He's wanting to get the lead and get it now, but Musgrave's strong. Bobby Hamilton actually working on the outside trying to get it also. These, these trucks get down to like nine, ten pounds on the left side. 20 pounds on the right. Take about five or six laps, everybody gets good grip and the racing's on. There are these concrete corners. The outside lane is a good lane. You can come up to speed as we just saw and get that jump. Now Bobby Hamilton with a good lead. Exactly. The outside lane is immediately available here. Not like some racetracks where you have to wait for it to work in. And that's by virtue of it being concrete with tremendous grip. And they just ground the corners down after the last time the trucks were here. And so this is new for a lot of these guys running today. Exactly. The asphalt had actually fallen down or sunk about a half inch below the concrete. Now that transition is fixed. It's a lot smoother in and off the corners. And we see now things are starting to settle down. You and see look at EW. Yep, great race there. Kevin there. Harvick on the inside. Daryl Waltrip trying to stay out in front of him as DW started just in front of Harvick, and now Harvick trying to make the pass going down the front stretch. Yes, and there's no guarantee that getting the inside is going to be the preferred line. You see Darrell right there staying right with him. If he can get a bite up off the corner, and Kevin's going to clear him right here. Walter ducking down to the inside now as they go through three and four, and again, we're on board with Darrell Walter. As a driver right now, you want to protect your truck. You can't knock those fenders in right now and not hope to win this race. There's a long way to go before 250 laps is over. Let's head down to trackside and film. Rick, I talked to Ted Musgrave right before the race. He said, hey, Bobby Hamilton and I both feel that Dennis Setzer has the best truck here. We know this is a long season. Bobby and I both want to lead. We're going to try to get it so we run side by side until each one of us leads a couple laps, and then if Dennis Sensor comes, he can have the rest of them. But we both want to lead this race, and I think we saw that happen. We elected as, working, as one with the Dodge count that it would be best for us to go and get our five bonus points early. So he led the first lap. He let me lead the second lap. He told me just stay out there. Then he called me, and I let, you know, we just motion each other by. But, you know, we're trying to win a championship here, and I think it's, it's really important from this time on for, for all the Dodge teams to work together. I talked to Larry Mack before he went up. I said, hey, you got the toughest job. He goes, no, Daryl's his own spotter. Yeah, you have to look not only at your truck, but far ahead, far ahead, almost to the next corner. You got to have good peripheral here to be a spotter. Ted Musgrave again taking the lead away from Bobby Hamilton as they've switched back and forth now. Well, that's what they were talking about doing right there. In third place, David Starr is holding up a uh, whole train of, of cars there, trucks there. Dennis Setzer right Seth. behind him. Travis Quapple sitting in fifth. Rick Crawford in sixth. Robert Presley seventh. Carl Edwards, rookie, sitting in eighth right now. Kenny Schrader sits in ninth. And Kevin Harvick rounds out the top ten. Uh, you can look for Setzer to use that chrome horn here. He's got a very good truck. David struggled a little bit, but yet he pulled off a great qualifying lap. The Spear 75 truck, as we see him here. Travis Quapple trying to make a move also. Defending championship ride there in the 16. 
And Daryl mentioned this at the beginning of the race, or actually before the race, how it is going to be hot. And we're going 250 laps here. I mean, that's going to... That's not only going to affect him, it's going to affect a lot of guys out there. It is going to affect everybody out there. There's no air in that racetrack. It's not like most racetracks. Side-by-side -side racing. Look how tight it gets through here. Yeah, Andy Houston trying. He's crowding Jason a little bit. He doesn't want to give up that spot, but Jason Leffer knows he's got to get to the front, and you can't wait long here to do it at Martinsville because the leader up front is getting that passing flag, and he'll lap you in a heartbeat. Andy Houston piloting the vocal clothing number 15 and has had some pretty good runs this, so far this season. Uh, he's just looking to get his short track, I guess, finishes a little bit better. Yeah, and he's staying right here with Jason. I tell you, he had a pretty good looking truck in practice. This week he's got something new. He's got Yates horsepower. Now, Barry, one thing you can do is you can burn your truck to the ground real early here if you just run it like that side by side. You got to use a lot of brake getting in the corner and these brakes can and will go away if you let them. Yep. Now, Barry, we talked earlier yesterday, even during qualifying, about forward bite, and that's so important here. Morgan Shepard looks as though he's got problems as he comes down pit road right now, falling off the pace. And he's, when you come in not even at pit road speed, that's that's not a good sign. He's obviously got a problem here. Yes, forward bite is paramount here. You have to have it. And the way these people get it, for you people at home, is they put pinion angle blocks in the rear end housing, between the rear end housing and the, and the training arms underneath. And what this does is actually turn the pinion that the drive shaft hooked to towards the ground. And it gives it forward bite. When you get in the gas, it wants to dig in the ground. Dig those back tires in, make it bite. Ted Musgrave still sitting out front as he tries to keep the forward bite working on that number one. We'll be back with more racing action after this. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 is brought to you by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR and the NHRA. By Advanced Auto Parts, around these parts, trouble doesn't stand a chance. We're ready in advance. Advanced Auto Parts, and by Ford. If you haven't looked at a Ford lately, look again. And we pick up racing action here. Ted Musgrave still holding on to the lead. Bobby Hamilton right behind him in the square D Dodge number four. And we take a look now. We're on board with the tied number 17. You can hear Larry Mack talking to him. Another guy who's part of this team and has now become a part of the broadcast team is NASCAR uh, superstar, we should say, Daytona 500 winner a couple times, and truck owner Michael Waltrip. Now, Michael, are you a little bit nervous about uh, your brother out there in the truck? Uh, no, I'm just more curious as to how all this is going to go down. This is uh, this is really fun for my team. Bobby Kennedy and the guys have got together and provided Daryl with a great truck here. We were able to buy a good couple good trucks from Rick Hendricks. DI provided us with an engine here, and uh, man, Daryl's starting to move. I figured nobody was taking any better of their truck than than in, than Daryl is right now. Still taking there, it easy, clear, checking it out. Clear, clear. Now he's making some passes. He likes the bottom of this racetrack. I explained to him that the high side has come in here lately. When they ground the track, you could run high or low. I knew that would be something different for him to get used to. People up high making runs on him, but now he's making moves. And he had dropped back to 15th. Uh, now, as you had mentioned, making a few passes, he's up into 13th position, and it looks like he's going to try to start picking other guys off. That's the old DW. I was his crew chief. A racetrack like this where you got to be clever, take care of your stuff. You got a problem on the back stretch. Randy, Randy McDonald. McDonald, flat tire. Left rear tire's flat. So he makes his way into the pits, and, and not with him today is Doc McDonald, who had surgery, and so he was not able to be here today, and we wish him well. Yes, yeah, so and we have no caution. It's all green. That's the cool thing about Martinsville, too, with 35, 36 trucks, where we start here today. You know, things get spread out, and you can see a lot of green flag racing. Cautions are are boring. You know, the more cautions you have, the more you ride around behind the pace car, that's no fun. Race car driver wants to string things out, go to racing and see what you got. Yeah, now you see what I was talking about. Rick, you guys, don't worry about Darrell when he drops back on this kind of racetrack. He's letting things settle out. He looked for an early crash. It didn't happen. Now you see him moving forward. He's got his, he's got the bead set on uh, Rich Bickle up here. Old droopy dog, Terry Cook's truck in front of that. You know if he gets there, Darrell's a contender today. Let's head down to Pitts and Ray Dunlap. Well, thanks, Rick. I got a question for Michael up there. Yesterday here at Martinsville, it was cold and rainy. 68 to 74 was our track temperature all day long. Today, I just took a measurement on pit road, 
2.9 degree pit temperature. What does this racetrack do, Michael, when the sun comes out? It just simply gets just gets slick, right? You know, the thing just, the truck wants to slide around a little bit the, more than it did on uh, yesterday. Daryl was prepared for this, though. He had a truck was just a little bit tight yesterday. He said, I think it'll be good when the sun shines tomorrow. The only thing I'm wondering about is how Daryl would be with the sun shining today <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work to run 250 laps in Martinsville, and he hasn't done this in a while. So uh, I'm watching him. He's good early. Let's hope he can be good all day long. I was going to ask you what kind of physical fitness training program you stuck him in with to get ready for this deal. Ah, just uh, a lot of hope. The boost. <laughs> the boost. And, and, you know, we've run 32 laps now, and, and Daryl probably feels like he's run 50. I worked out a little bit before we got here, but not near as much as I really probably needed to. But I didn't get tired. I was worried when I saw how hot it was going to be today. But the truck was very comfortable to drive, and they had it fixed up real nice for me, and everything went good. Hey guys, we're talking about Harvick there. Started 13th, moved up to 5th. But one thing I noticed, take a look at the very front of his race truck. Not one single piece of tape on the front end of that number 6 truck. There's actually four or five guys down here that didn't put any tape on the front grill today. And maybe that's because of the temperature. Harvick. Here we go again, a change of the lead. Bobby Hamilton jumps back out in front of Ted Musgrave. And so again, a lead change, but staying between the two, Ted Musgrave and Bobby Hamilton. Great racing continues here as we have 216 laps to go in this, the Martinsville Speedway Advanced Auto Parts 250. Mario Andretti, Richard Petty, A.J. Foyt, Dale Earnhardt, who will join the list of legends and be named the 2003 Driver of the Year. Now you, the fan, along with a distinguished media panel, will decide which driver in American motorsports deserves this that prestigious honor. Log on to SpeedTV.com or cast your vote for this quarter's nominees. Log on to SpeedTV.com to cast your vote. And we see the exciting racing taking place there. And Michael, this has got to be a change of pace for you to actually watch a race as an owner from the booth. Yeah, I'm having a hard time looking at this camera. I want to look over my shoulder and see how, <laughs> see how the truck's doing. But, man, it's just been a solid effort. You know, we won practice before qualifying. That was cool. And Darrell was in top five in the uh, happy hour time. So I think as the time, time goes on here, the, car, the truck will just get faster and faster. And he'll, uh, he'll be a contender. It looks like he's running really well. His lap times right now are as good as Bobby Hamilton's. It's just a matter of working his way through these trucks. And there's, there's no question that he's probably the smartest driver out there as far as Martinsville goes. So for him to be back in 13th, 14th, he's probably just biding his time. Buffy said I hadn't been taking very good care of the dream machine and that he, she needed to see what she could do about that. She got the smartest, most carefulest person. She got a retired guy to drive our truck. So uh, I better straight shape up on the on the dream machine. Now, does he have a chance to ever drive the dream machine? No, not at all. But you know what I figured out? If he drives that truck, he can get more stuff in there. He can put like a big screen and a recliner in the back in the bed of that thing. <laughs> That's exactly right. We continue with racing action again up front. Bobby Hamilton, now your leader, Ted Musgrave, sits in second. David Starr has moved into third position and a great battle for third there as Dennis Setzer moves his way through the field. Let's head down to Ray. Well, Rick, he's starting to get a little bit better, but Setzer was not happy with his truck at all when this race started. He said he was way too tight in the center, so they want to go up a couple rounds on the track bar Coming and back. make an air pressure adjustment on the right rear whenever they do get a pit stop here. But guys, I take a look at the scoreboard here as we get to 45 laps. I don't think we've ever started a race at Martinsville where we've gone 45 green flag laps at the beginning. Great racing. Everybody's racing smart. They're racing hard, but they're racing smart right now. And, you know, I, I owe an apology to David Starr. I, I didn't think he was off to a good start, but yet he's held off Dennis Setzer. Now, Dennis has caught him back in this traffic here. Oh, oh. We've got some great racing going on. Getting squeezed down there a little bit, Starr was, but they'll make their way by the lap truck. That was Brian Rose that he got inside of there. I don't know. Brian didn't know they were coming on there, but that's a pretty intense battle. He knows they're there now. Look at here. Yeah. Brian Rose picking up Noser as a sponsor for this race, and those two teaming up. Noser part of the uh, radio control motors. David Starr likes looking in the rear mirror and seeing all that bumping and banging going on back there. That's letting him slip away again. Take a look at Kevin Harvick, Winston Cup veteran moving here into the truck, a truck owner driving his own truck, now sitting in fifth position right behind Dennis Setzer. Harvick looked good yesterday in happy hour. He's very fast. 
Michael, his truck is rotating. It's turning the way you want it to, much like Daryl's. Daryl's a guy on the loop right now, too. He just got by Droopy Dog, and that's a task in itself. Yeah, he's been, he and Bickle have been moving through the field pretty good. They're faster than some of the guys ahead of them. But, man, when you catch a guy, Bear, I'm watching the times on the computer here, you lose a half a second just running up behind somebody. And I think that's interesting that we've seen Bobby Hamilton break away from the field somewhat, but from second all the way back to 15th or 20th, they're still within a quarter of a lap of each other. Exactly. And, and Bickle, that's a new team, so this is a great effort for him. But he's a former winner in this series and a great short track racer out of Wisconsin. Rich Bickle won here in 1997, and so to have those two guys running together, Rich Bickle and Darrell Walter, you've got a lot of experience here at Martinsville. Growing up, these paperclip racetracks back at home in the old ra racetrack at Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, was just like this until they redid it and I redesigned it. And uh, you learn how to race these places. And, you know, I've raced 171 different racetracks. Not many people can say something like that. But uh, after 171, you come to this place like this and you race on three or four or five that's similar to this. So you get to learn how to drive pretty good. And you look at that where DW is right right there. When they catch up, it's Kenny Schrader in the front. So you got a lot of experience in those three trucks right there. Well, you can see a lot of times experience will pay dividends here at Martinsville. This is a tough track. You got to slow down sometimes to go fast. You got to roll into the corner, get off the brakes, and hope that car will rotate. It looked like early in the race that Daryl's truck was a little bit tight. You couldn't get it turned like you want to. But now that we've got some laps on the tires, that could pay dividends. He could get better and better as time goes forward. And Michael, I, I would think DW really likes where he's sitting there because I know he's confident with Rich Bickle and he's got Kenny Schrader right there. So he trusts those guys and that's what you want. Yeah, but it's going to be time to start making some moves, Dorsey. We're back in 11th right now. You know, we've stretched it out to where we've run 53 laps now. If you're going to think about winning this race, you're going to have to start moving up toward the top five. Harvick's making a nice move. He'll be strong. Setzer had the best truck in happy hour yesterday. You can count on him to be there. We need to join that group. Here's a great race right here. Carl Edwards just getting by the number 14 of Rick Crawford. Let's head down to Phil Parsons. Carl reported earlier that his truck was tight in the center, but it has started to free up. And it's really good now. Maybe just a bit freeing us off the corner, so he's pretty happy with his truck. As we see the battle going on for sixth position, Carl Edwards taking over that position from Rick Crawford. We've completed 55 laps here at Martinsville. We'll be back for more after this. Daryl had a good time. I had a good time, and and uh, you know we were we were going up through the pack there pretty decent in the beginning, and you know, we we're working pretty good together, hand signals, and you know he's still gonna drive, ain't no doubt about it. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 from here in Martinsville, Virginia, Martinsville Speedway. And we are under our first caution because of the number eight Dodge of Bill Lester getting spun around in turn number four. And we can take a look at how we came under caution number one. Should be a lap down right there, so should be second time by. He spun around in turn number three as he was coming in, and there was some bumping going on there, and so there was quite a bit of racing happening, and that happens here at Martinsville. The lap before I had looked, and Jason Leffler had kind of moved him off turn two. I'm not sure what happened in three and four, but he definitely got turned around, but not much damage, and we got a lot, uh, a lot of trucks pitting right now at uh, lap 61, Michael. Mostly from the uh, middle of the field back. All the leaders elected to stay out, and uh, that's the cool thing about having a limited amount of number, a limited amount of tires available to you, uh, Barry. Because when you don't have tires just galore, you don't stop every time the caution comes out. You got to use some strategy, and you can see right now, Ray, some of these guys are strategizing. What do you got down there, buddy? Well, guys, when the two came in, Jason Leffler, these guys set up like they were going to do a four-tire change. They went around, did right sides only, moved around like they were going to do the lefts, but then Leffler took off. This was pre-planned. They wanted to do just a two-tire stop, not to lose too much time here on pit road. A couple other guys, though, came to pit road to do four tires, like the 62 of Brendan Gaughan, and we'll keep you updated on who all made it to pit road. Well, I tell you what, it was close on the other end. And down to Phil. Let's see what you got, Phil. Okay, ready on the pit yeah, uh, John Wood came in. His truck was very, very tight in the center of the corner, and he adjusted on it. He took some wedge out of the left rear of the truck. His truck was very tight in the center of the corner, which made him loose up off the corner. John Wood had been making a pretty good move through the field. He started 21st, and he was moving his way through. And then after the pits, uh, 
Drops back into 21st. We were a little bit free on entry, and I don't know whether or not the two got up underneath me a little bit and gave me some help, or I just lost it. But uh, back end got around, and usually I'm pretty good at saving them, but <laughs> there's no saving that one. Good thing is that we didn't go up there and nudge the wall. Uh, we went down there probably at the end of the lead lap. Exactly. We've run 60 laps. Bobby them didn't pit. We're going to see what his truck is like from lap 60 to lap 120 now on a set of tires. So I think that's interesting. Exactly. On the other end of pit road, uh, the 15, I think, got four tires as well as a couple more. And they almost went a lap down. Let's go down to Phil Parsons. Looking at Andy Petrie's truck, they have left for changing left side tires. They came in a few, a couple laps ago, changed right side tires. Now they're changing left side tires. Going to make an adjustment on the right rear. Taking a little wedge out of the right rear. Trying to free this thing up a little bit. Andy Petrie. And Andy got, got in that lap back there, and uh, he's going to be in pretty good shape. And, you know, he's running 65 laps and still got the sheet metal on here, Michael. <laughs> tell, tell the fans at home now, how can a truck or a car, the truck in this instant, be tight and make it loose? Tell the, the young racers at home. Well, what you want to do here at Martinsville especially, in order to run the fastest lap possible, you need to start squeezing that gas down early in the, in the center of the turn, Barry. You want to apply the gas while you're still turning. If your car's pushing, when you apply the gas, you add more steering. Pretty soon, the front tire says, I'm done, I can't hold it anymore. And the back tire starts spinning, so you kick the back end around. That's something you haven't seen the 17 truck do today, spin the tires up off the corner. I hope that pays dividends for him as we go forward. Michael Dolan takes the pit truck into pit lane. Green flag, green flag. flag flies again. Daniel Riggs throwing the flags today for NASCAR, and here are the sights and sounds of speed. And Bobby's cleared that lap truck. That's what he wanted to do. Great racing here, and Michael, uh, your brother's best finish here in a truck is fifth. Did you guys set goals as far as owner-driver, as for where you want him to end up? Not until practice was over yesterday, and then we said, we need to win this race. <laughs> you know, he had one of the best trucks here. Uh, so we, we didn't have any goals. Our goals were modest until we came here, but DEI has provided us an engine for this hot rod, and that's as good as it gets. Uh, it's a Hendrick truck. My boys, Bobby Kennedy, all the Cheryl Ford Posse, they know what they're doing. So realistically, we should have a chance to win this race. And Daryl's just, uh, he's the man here at Martinsville. He'll, he'll get going here before this race is over. Okay. We take a look here on board. <laughs> that's uh, napkin to be taking a, a look at, at a break. Well, that's a napkin stuck right there. You see uh, some of the debris that uh, has been picked up in suspension. It's not doing anything. If it gets over that bank, it'll burn up. Got a change for the lead right here. Bobby Hamilton right back where he wants to be. But look who's moved into this picture, guys. Kevin Harvick, and now he's trying to get under Musgrave. You see, Harvick started right behind Darrell, and now he's already fought his way into the battle for the lead. So uh, that's a bit of a concern on new tires. Are we going to be able to keep up the pace when we eventually pit and run like Harvick has on new tires? Right, and don't worry about that piece of paper. All it was was a Martinsville hot dog wrapper. That's exactly right. And, it's very out famous here. and he is so easy on the brakes, he don't even set wrappers on fire. No, he doesn't. You see that rotor, That's you're talking 12, 1,300 degrees for a lot of drivers, not for Darrell Walter, maybe 1,000. He knows without brakes you can't be competitive. And we continue with the Advanced Auto Parts 250 here in Martinsville. We'll be back with more after this. We had a motor problem. The lifter broke and uh, damaged the cam, which we had to change the motor, and we didn't have one lap, so... We kind of just shot in the dark. Bobby Hamilton still out in front. Ted Musgrave sitting second. Kevin Harvick moving up in that number six Chevrolet. And we can talk to these guys uh, under green flag. We're not going to talk to Daryl, but we will talk to Jeff Hammond. And to do that, we have owner Michael Waltrip. Jeff, what's he say about the truck, bud? 
Right now, Michael, he's saying the thing is just a little bit loose when he gets back into full throttle right at the top of the corner. If he babies it just a little bit, rolls in the throttle, it's not too bad. The biggest thing, he's been trying to like get held up by some of the other trucks like Rick, Rick, Rick Bickle trying to get by Kenny Schrader at the same time. It's kind of held him up. And uh, a few minutes ago after this restart, we kind of got beat around just a little bit. Got a little damage done in the right front uh, corner, but I don't think that's really going to be a problem. I'm just trying to keep him being patient. Still a long ways to go, and we know we finally make our pit stop. We'll make that little bit of adjustment. I think that'll get the board light he needs. He'll get up there and maybe challenge for a win here today, or at least a top five finish. Yeah, a couple of those trucks that just went by, Darrell, the two and the 16, have just come off pit road. Uh, the two only got two tires, and it looks like it's working pretty well for him. So y'all might consider that as you look forward to late race strategy. Yeah, we've been talking about that, trying to talk with uh, Buddy Barnes or Red Dog, and along with Bobby Kennedy, and Larry McReynolds have been giving some pretty good, you know, uh, idea of what the leader's been doing. So we've just been trying to pace ourselves, save a little bit of brake, keep the nose in the front of the truck, and give ourselves an opportunity to work on it. You know, when we do come down pit road, we got a game plan here today, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to stick with it and make it happen. How's it feel to be on that cushy hotel job back down in the trenches with the guys battling down there? I tell you what, uh, it always gives you a good feeling when you got a good truck out there and a good driver. And right now today, I've got uh, the best of both worlds, a great crew, great car, and a great driver. And uh, it's nice to be back, but I'll be honest with you, Mike. I do enjoy doing the television work. I enjoy talking about it because I know when they get done here, Bobby and the guys have got to go back, and they got to do a lot of work with this truck probably to get the body straightened out of This is Martin. All right, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, man. Talk to you later. Hang in down there. You better go go faster, though, because Harvick's making Daryl look like you don't know what he's doing. But hey, experience, baby. Experience. It's a time to race, and it's a time to ride. I knew that word was going to come out. Experience. <laughs> Kevin Harvick is working on his experience here at Martinsville, as he's running very well. He currently sits in third right behind Ted Musgrave. About half of these trucks are working on each other's bumpers. Looking right there, there's a bump by Carl Edwards working on the back of David Starr. That's 99 and 75. But that's happening, folks, all around the racetrack. Michael, I don't know if you've seen this kid run a bunch, but he is the real deal, he's, Carl Edwards. He's certainly fun to watch. I loved him at Darlington. Never even been there before, and he looked like he'd been there 100 years. So uh, he does a great job. The cool thing about what they've done with Martinsville, Barry, is what you see right here. Used to, Starr would be out in no man's land. Now that they've ground it, the track has opened up. There's room for everybody in the corners. You can do that five-wide thing Dorsey was talking about when the show started. There you go. I, I didn't know it could be done, but I said it could, so maybe somebody <laughs> helped me out on that deal. I hope it. Anyway. A lot of great do. racing taking place here as Bobby Hamilton still sits out in front. Carl Edwards battling right now with David Starr for fifth position. Race started out really well for us. The Spirit Chevrolet was uh, handled good out there and just a good old... You know, it, it turned good in the center from the start. It was a little tight off the corners, but it turned good in the center. But uh, as the race went on, the truck got tighter and tighter. It just wouldn't rotate in the center. And once it don't rotate in the center, you know, we lost our forward bite. We'd get loose off the corners. Now, I think experience here might have hurt Daryl in this case. <laughs> He's used to running right around the bottom of this racetrack. It's been ground lately. Now guys are making moves around him on the outside. He's never seen that before. He didn't know that's what they could that have the ability to do. So uh, that's hurt him a little bit. Jody Lavender just was uh, the beneficiary of a inside, sweet ride inside, by Andy inside. Petrie. He's there. Inside. Andy Petrie moved Jody Lavender out of the way as he went by. Yeah, that's a result of four new tires right there. That's what they'll do for you. You're going to have to get on that mic and tell him, Michael. I mean, you're the owner. Yeah, it's out of my hands. I'd rather be a TV dude right now. <laughs> well, I was you... enjoying being the owner yesterday when we were the fastest in practice. But right now, I would just soon talk about the great job that Kevin Harvick is doing. Racing for second place up underneath Musgrave. Also, guys that are making big moves, Andy Petrie, Jason Leffler has moved up 14 spots. And you see here, a move to try to take over second. Kevin Harvick on the inside, Musgrave on the outside. Kevin kept took the thing all the way down to the dirt that time. He put the left front right in the dirt trying to get down there. And he held it right around the bottom door, see, like you said, and you didn't see the thing kick sideways with him on the way off. That's good forward bite for pitching the truck down that low in the turn. Kevin, it... He knows his place now in the truck series. He knows uh, that, you know, just race hard and clean and everybody respects him back. And that, that was great. You know, I don't mind doing that. Run the high, gave him a full groove. He gave me a lane. We never touched. Race side by side like that. That's what pe people in the stands, you know, racing like that, hard racing. I was driving as hard as I could. He was doing the best he could. I was just trying to make him burn his tires up on the bottom, coming off the corner, make him lose his uh, traction. Great race taking place here for second. Ted Musgrave holding on to the position. Kevin Harvick right behind him. We've completed 92 laps here at Martinsville. We'll be back. And welcome back 
to Martinsville, Virginia. We are now coming up on lap 100. So guess what, folks? We are inside of our pit window. Now, one guy that would love to see a pit stop is Terry Cook. Cook right now is running in 15th, about where he started in 16th position. No, now he's back to 19th. But today, he has a crew chief change. Ron Keselowski is sitting on top of the box today. That's because Bob Keselowski is back at home in Michigan, recovering from a heart attack. So Bob and Kay, we certainly miss you here at the track. Droopy Dog has been very, very tight in the center today. So these guys said, we want to make sure that Bob gets back to get to his crew chief job real, real soon. So Bob, we're waiting for you to get back and Terry will be into the pit road to try to loosen that thing up here in just a little bit. Well, and I think that hurt us a little bit today. You know, Ron, his brother, stepped in, did an awesome job all day long, but uh, we know we kind of missed a few things that Bob has always been on top of and stayed on top of our program with, and uh, it may have hurt us a little bit today. Each day he's making more and more recovery, and um, I know he's at home watching right now, so uh, we wish him the best. I was trying to get that lap back for him. He yeah. lost it by about a fender. He tried. It's going to be four tires. You want any adjustments there, bud? Bobby uh -huh. tried to slow down to help uh, Robert oh, stay on the lead lap. Good and smooth. I believe, Let's be efficient here. I believe. We were listening into Bobby Hamilton right there uh, saying he needs four tires. We'll take a look now at why caution number two came out. Robert Robert Presley sliding up there. The advanced auto parts number 59. You see he on got the nudged tailgate. by the dodge of Jason Leffler. Gets on the inside of Robert and just kind of bumps him out of the way. Yeah, that's all it takes to just see by. Well, it's baseball season and Jason's already got two hits for today. So, but he's moving up. He's done a good job. Tried to get his lap back. Can you see there? I, oh, he oh, didn't get it. That was he tried to help. Couple feet. Man, he just liked a little bit. <laughs> okay, Michael, you know this. If you're not way up front here, you've got to be very, very careful attempting to get four tires. Let's go down to Ray and see what he's got. Well, Barry Harvick's crew has decided that they were going to do right side tires only, but he was outside the pit box, so they said, since we're here and we're going to have to have a little bit of a slow stop, let's do four. They've got crew guys here from the number 29, also from Robbie Gordon's Winston Cup crew. But he was outside the pit box, so it was a mistake by the driver. Phil? Bobby Hamilton, our leader, and four tires, no changes. Again, Dave Blaney's Winston Cup crew doing the pit work. Now Darrell Waltrip here, the 17 truck in. Bobby Kennedy said they were a little bit loose. We're gonna do an air pressure adjustment, try to free the, to tighten this thing up a little bit off the corner. And Darrell's gone. Harvick is being held a lap. You saw the NASCAR Harvick. official standing in front of the six of Kevin Harvick. He was okay. being held almost a lap. That uh, usually makes him smoke out the ears. 15, 15 second penalty, I think it was, is what Michael was touching on. Uh, all right, girls, where are you with your sheet? Let's be waving it here. <laughs> That's right. Be careful, Kevin. Yeah, you easy. still have to work tomorrow. This is going to be fun. The complexion of the race just changed. Travis Waffle stayed out. Here comes a girl with a sheet, giving these boys notes so they look like they know what they're talking about. <laughs> I always suspected there was somebody Don't you behind, tell on us. behind the scenes that were running this deal. Travis Quapple restarted 15th on lap 66 after pitting under caution. We'll be back with more action after this. Welcome back to Martinsville Speedway here in Martinsville, Virginia for the Advanced Auto Parts 250. A guy taking a little bit of a break there until he has to go to work tomorrow. Kyle Petty in the number 45. And we take a look at the Craftsman pit profile. And we can talk to Jeff Hammond about how this took place. Let's look first at how the Tide crew did on their pit stop. Jeff, did you get to make, did you get to tighten the truck up and make all the changes Darrell wanted to make? I know you were fortunate to catch that caution. He seems to be the master at that. Well, right now, Barry, everything's kind of fell into place. We were hoping to get up around 105, to, you know, up to 150, somewhere in there, hit that window so we could make one pit stop. The adjustments we did make, we got took care of. We made a little air pressure adjustment and really just needed to get some track position right there with all those guys with fresh tires on. They were wearing us out pretty hard. We were just trying to find a good place to run. We had to call him and say, hey, you got to pick it up a little bit because Bobby Hamilton was, you know, had some clean air. And he was coming pretty quick, so uh, he got back up on the wheel and we got by a few guys, but this was the caution we were looking for. We got the adjustments made. The Tide crew did a great job. I mean, I want to thank Cal Wells and uh, Ricky Craven for allowing these guys to come help us out here today. And, you know, it looks great to have all these brightly colored uniforms in the pits, you know, representing our sponsor, but they also have the caliber pit crew that gives us an opportunity to pick up something on pit road. Take a look at the pit summary here. 
Coming in, Bobby Hamilton was sitting first, now drops back to fifth. Musgrave was sitting second, drops back to seventh after that pit. The guy moving back the farthest, Kevin Harvick, because of he pitted out of his box, and so he had a one-lap penalty. He moves all the way back to 19th. Well, he, they got it. They were going to get four tires. He was out of the box. The right front. You can have the right rear out. You cannot have the right front. So they got to move it back over. And they, they got the right side. They're coming around here. And uh, instead of what they could have done was not perform service on the exactly. truck and got it back in the box. They didn't do that. That wound up costing you a lap. The smartest thing is to get it in the box, put two tires on it, and come back in. He's got that good enough truck. Now he's starting right on the inside of the lead, though, Barry. He's got fresh tires, and Wapple doesn't. So this should be a cakewalk for Harvard to get his lap back here. And a little bit of temperature, too. <laughs> As they come out of turn number four, it's Dennis James doing the flag duties. Be ready. Be ready. Green flag, green flag, green flag. Dennis James throwing the green flag, and Kevin Harvick trying to get out in front of your leader, Travis Quaffle, so he doesn't lose the lap. There's that cake walk I was telling you about. That cake part. <laughs> another guy running up there, uh, he was another one of the lapped trucks, but the Dodge number eight of Bill Lester running fairly, very well now that he's got his new tires on. Bill Lester right before that stop was bumping and banging like no tomorrow, trying to get that in a position to get that lap back. He's had a strong truck. And John Wood's wearing his back bumper out right now. As a matter of fact, he's almost knocked the tailpiece off of it. You, you can see it, uh, see it flying around right there. John's having a great run. He's from about 10 miles up the road. Son of Eddie Wood, uh, representing U.S. Navy. Now today, Barry, you've seen uh, John's in a Ford truck. Bill Lester's running great in the Dodge. Daryl Chevy, Harvick Chevy. There's, there's parity at Martinsville. You know, when the racers come to Martinsville, you pretty much forget about all the rules that make up aerodynamics or the rules that NASCAR used to govern the trucks. You just go race. Yeah, and here's the lead right here. Chad Chapman, Chapman, the number one spot. Chad Chapman on the inside. Travis Quaffle on the outside, battling for the lead. Chapman oh, on the outside. Or Tra Chapman takes Quaffle almost into the wall, coming out of two. And Chad Chapman's your new leader. And Michael, we've seen that kind of parity in every truck race this year. And next year, we've got Toyota coming in. That's going to be big, and it's going to be interesting to see how NASCAR changes these trucks so that the aerodynamics isn't a question like they've been able to do in Winston Cup racing. Kind of go to a more common template, aero match the trucks to, to speak. I think that's what the future holds. They're going to have a common cab. Schrader, Schrader's in a hornet's nest right here. He, knew, he knows he needs to go. And he knows the 57 is holding him up. Yep. Oh, there's a little bump there. Look, at <laughs> Look right here in the fender. Right, look there, big old. That's got to be frustrating, Michael, for a driver, knowing that you're quicker and you can't go anywhere. Yeah, and if you start getting impatient, though, Barry, that's the crazy thing. You'll get impatient because you'll get all hemmed in. But if you do that here at Martinsville, somebody slips off the corner, you get in back of them. As we see right here, the oh, 57. Yep. Brian Rose. Spinning he was, around. He was right in front of the 52. He got help. Ken, Ken Schrader just moved him out of the way. Yeah. Ken Let's Schrader head down to him out of the way. Let's go to the pits and right. Well, guys, this is a big break for Kevin Harvick. These guys very, very happy about the fact that this caution came out because he is now back on the lead lap. And I can show you right here exactly why. This is the pit road map that the NASCAR inspectors carry with them. Now, I thought that oh, now it is whenever it doesn't blow away. Let me show you again. <laughs> this map right here, I thought this is what Harvick had done here, pulled in this way. And that's okay. See, it's all right if you come in this direction, but he did not. This is what Kevin Harvick had done. His right front tire was on the line, and he did that because he wants to try to get a fast exit out of pit road. He said, look, it was a driver's mistake. I'm sorry, but they just came back on the radio, and Todd Barrier said, don't worry about it, buddy. Doesn't matter anymore because we're back on the lead lap. I just got a little over anxious and I was actually aimed at the pit stall in front of me for some reason and when I squirted the throttle to, to get into the pit stall uh, I realized that uh, I was one off and by the time I stopped uh, the right side tires were on the line or over the line and and they had uh, already changed the tires so uh, that's a one lap penalty and so be it. Hey Daryl it's Mike can you hear me I'm in the booth. 
buddy. I hear you loud and clear. Are you having a nice time up there? Yeah, did you get your truck tuned on so we can go up through there? I got a little news for you. Harvick got his lap back and he's behind you. He's going to be coming your way. But if he gives you any trouble, don't worry. He's got to race with me tomorrow. I got your backside. Yeah, 10-4. We're going to do it. Well, it ain't time to do any boogie in yet. we got to hang in here for a little while. But uh, I think we got something when the time comes. Remember that keyword, when the time comes, we'll work on them. All right, remember what I told you this morning, don't let them pinch you down, pinch you down there on that bottom. If you got to, slide up the top of the hill a little bit. Coming to the green, suck it up. Let's go, bro. One more, come to the inside of you. Face truck's off. Be ready, be ready, be ready. We're all around green, 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 let's go. And racing continues out in front. Chad Chaffin, still your leader. We've got some guys that have moved up because of the pinning. Uh, Travis Quaffle sitting second. Andy Houston in the Vocal clothing number 15 in that Ford. Currently in third. Also a Ford right behind him. John Wood in the U.S. Navy number 50. Bobby Hamilton, the veteran that's been up front all day, running in fifth right now. Brendan Gaunt's moved up to sixth. Seventh is Musgrave. Dennis Setzer and Crawford rounding out the top nine and Leffler in tenth. Battle for the lead right here, side by side. Quavo wants it, and he's got him cleared. He's got that Chevrolet hooked up. You know, when you come from the middle of the pack to the top five in the green, you got something to work with, and now he's taking the lead. Yeah, Robert, who's want? I mean, Michael, who's wanting to see a caution right now? <laughs> no one worse than Robert Presley. He's got his lap back, got a bit of a cushion, but he knows there's some fast trucks behind him. So, uh, thought we were going to get a debris caution off four here. A couple guys got together, but uh, no harm, no foul. You see that debris there, Joey Lavender is number 08. Still running well, though. Uh, in a place like this, uh, that's going to have some bumping and banging. Let's head down to the pits and fill. Want to talk a little bit about Andy Houston. Gary Showalter said they went up two rounds on the track bar on lap 61, put four tires on it. These guys had a really good truck at Bakersfield a few weeks ago, but did not feel like they got the finish they deserved because they had some trouble on pit road. Well, they fixed that. They went out and got Dale Jarrett's Winston Cup crew to pit this truck today. So Andy Houston looking for a great run here in the uh, Vocal Ford. And he's getting it. That is a great run. That truck's going. Did you say you had Robert Yates horsepower under the hood? Yes, it is. Brenda gone right there with John Wood and Toe and right behind him must be. This is a great battle. Oh, look at John, man. He's all of them right now racing for fifth position. Brendan Gaughan holding on to it. John Wood trying to take it away. Brendan Gaughan in third place in our championship run right now. He's been driving with his head all year. John Wood really the hound dog right now. He's just barking. And John Wood is showing you that you can pass on the outside. And another guy trying to show you that uh, is Chad Chaffin, but he's moving up on the inside. And Chad Chaffin takes over the lead from Quapel. It was planned to make a two-stop two deal out of this thing. Uh, we was real tight at the start. Uh, Chad needed some help so he could come back, you know, through the, to the pack. So we made an air pressure adjustment. It really, really made the truck come alive. So, uh, you know, we was planning on stopping like lap 230 or something like that, or we could go to lap 230. Kept having cautions and cautions. We took the lead right after running, staying in the lead. We just had to go for it. We'll be back with more after this. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 is brought to you by new muscle shoes from Red Wing. So comfortable, you can't take them off. And by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Caution number four is on the track. All four cautions have looked a lot alike, haven't they? They yeah. definitely have. Stands <laughs> in turns three and four. This was T.J. Bell that uh, got put around this time. He got help. I saw it. And Barry, go ahead. I'm sure you're going to talk about the Robert beneficiary. Robert got the lap back. It's what Michael was talking about a while ago. Here's the guy who wants a break right now. He wants to get the caution, and he got it. Usually when the leaders start catching the tail end of the field, that's when you'll get a caution because guys get a little bit impatient and get a nose alongside the cat in front of them and decide that uh, maybe they can't complete the pass conventionally. Maybe it's time to move them over a little bit. Well, Michael, we're past the halfway mark, and somewhere along in here is when you get the word from the guy upstairs. That, okay, let's go to work now. Let's get it done. Yeah, I, I, I want to see when, when DW turns it up. You know, he said it ain't time yet. It's got to be time soon. You better call him up and tell him he's got 115 to go. 
Yeah, it's he's all right. He's he's doing all right. He's got his truck in it a little bit. That probably set his program off 10 or 15 laps. <laughs> Check them out. Who are these guys here? That's Bobby Kennedy on the right and Jeff Hammond on the left. And Jeff Hammond is trying to explain to Bobby exactly what Daryl meant when he said whatever he said. Yeah, did you guys go to the same school in Owensboro? Because you say explain, and yet Daryl says splain. Well, he got, he got that from Jake Gilder. Those are words he learned when he moved to North Carolina. All right. Hey, another guy that you're very familiar with is Kenny Schrader. Maybe you want to take a, uh, take a listen to Ken Schrader. Hey, Schrader, it's Michael. I'm up in the booth. I was going to get you on TV. Can you hear me? Trying to get through. Didn't hurt it any place. Helped it from the center and off. Just still needs more. Kenny Schrader, it's Michael up in the booth. Can you hear me? I was going to get you on TV. Yes, yeah, sir. I, I see you, but don't. I hear you good, but don't be showing that I'm behind your brother, okay? I can document that you weren't that way until you pitted so you can blame it on someone else. You know, it's all about an excuse sometimes. Thank you, Mike. We've been fighting tight here. Um, we get another, we, get, we made a dynamator better the last stop. We get one more set of tires and we'll make it a little better. And then we dug ourselves in a hole, so we're going to have to go to work here, buddy. Well, we got that little Monday night show that we do, and uh, I'd like to see you do something exciting so we could talk about it. Over. Yeah, what about like if I run into your brother? I can't think of anything any better. Harvick's there too. He's high profile. He gets mad. Run into him. Let's see how he reacts. All right. Have fun up there. We are. Good luck the rest of the day, buddy. Of course, those guys are talking about inside Winston Cup. Uh, 7 o'clock on Mondays. And they have a lot of fun on the set as well. Uh, it's right here. And, and of course, NASCAR uh, would not condone any of this run into him or bump into that's all joking right Mike we're, we're just kidding we just talk that way to each other we don't mean it literally we mean right. it figuratively right take a look there at Dennis James telling him one to go let's head down to the pits and rain well guys Robert Presley just came back into the pits to put his left side tires on the problem was when he pitted the very first time on this uh, caution flag he got his truck too close to the wall so they weren't able to get the jack under for him to get his left side he now has four fresh tires on that Harris Trucking Dodge and a full load of fuel. I just asked his crew chief, Greg Connor, can you go the distance? He said, absolutely, we will not pit again if we don't have a problem. You better get caught up, they're going green and he's uh, he's dragging around. Okay, there he is. Oh, there's a bump back there, these guys stacking up. Oh yeah, here we go. Ready, green flag, green flag, green flag. Oh, oh trouble in the front straightaway. On a 91 truck. 91, the John J. Stout, J.C. Stout got a little, I don't know if he got help there, but he spun right in front of everybody. It could have been a lot worse. Bill Lester will get a lap back from his teammate. That's always nice when your teammate's leading and you need a break. See if he lets anybody else get a lap back here. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, nope. Stay on back there. No, oh, he let 72. That was Randy nice McDonald got his lap back. Yeah. That's been a controversial subject in NASCAR racing as of late. Especially right when the wreck is at the start. <laughs> well, and actually, Randy McDonald there, uh, he was four laps back, and so he just gained I'm one lap back. Dog. We That's take a look now. Uh, while we are under caution today. number five here. Uh, you should take a look at the start. He got spun all by himself. That Man. was just a, a young guy mistake, you know, just jumped on the throttle too hard, didn't have any rear temperature, spun up the rears and uh, got out from under him. Dorsett looked like a track bar or he broke an axle or something Could like that. Could have been an axle too. We'll see it yeah, here. I think something went out from underneath that truck. Watch the right rear. You can see it move right here. Yeah, it leaned over bad, didn't it? That tells you how fast you're going. He tore that truck up that bad on a restart. It was probably in second gear. Look how hard he hit. And you see the damage there to J.C. Stout's number 91. We'll be back with continuing coverage of the Advance Auto Parts 250. Your niece watching there, Mike. And my sister. And my other niece. I got more people telling me how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, having Hammond down there is always good. I mean, we get a, I just, he just knows me, and, and that's always good. And Larry Mack spotted for us up there at Indy last year. We finished six. He did a super job, and I didn't even know he could spot, but he's a racer. You know, give him a job, they do it. And uh, today he did fine, and, uh, you know, Michael's up in the booth, and he's talking to me, and everybody here, I think, had a, had a hookup to <laughs> I was talking to people. I didn't even know who they were, but anyway, it was, it was a lot of fun, and, and, and we did run good.
And we're back at the Advanced Auto Parts 250 here for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, race number four. And we have all access coverage of the number 17 tie truck of Darrell Waltrip. And we'll show you what we've picked up so far. He's happy. When this race is over, will y'all both be happy? Oh, the track's still get in. It seems pretty good. Uh, it's not dirty and it's not slick, so it seems all right. Boogity, 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 baby, go get him. Hey, then give us a quick rundown of what's going on right now. How are your brakes? What's the truck feeling like right now? It's in really good shape. So just being patient right now is not a bad thing. He's got to get the hot dog out of his mouth. These people eat good up here, Daryl. <laughs> hey, uh, big brother, can you hear me? Poorly, I'm clear. Uh, I just need a little insight. I know you said you're patient, and I just wondered when you're going to turn it up and head toward the front so I could call it on TV like I know what I'm talking about. Getting close, brother. Just stay tuned. Just tell all the people watching, stay tuned. Is there any other anything else I'm supposed to say up here? The food is wonderful, by the way, up here. Boy, well, you spent a couple of years up there, and you might reconsider being out here. The pace truck did not go in, so he's still out, still out. Larry Mack letting him know that we're still going to be under a caution. And so, as Larry Mack takes a look at the field, we'll take a short break and be right back. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series as we get restarted here in the Advanced Auto Parts 250. And we can take a look now as we're on board with Bobby Hamilton. Let's run through the field. Let's go down to Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, our leader, Chad Chaffin, in number 18, is driving a truck they call Chunky. This truck finished fifth at Darlington, and last a uh, couple days ago, they tested it at Greenville Pickens. They pitted on lap 60, and he was very tight. They filled it up with fuel. The big question is, now, can they make it all the way? Let's check in with Phil. Our second-place runner, Travis Quapple, is driving the set. Oh, we've got trouble on the racetrack. And again... The 78 of Charlie Bradbury having troubles in turns three and four, Michael. I mean, we're seeing this as a regular occurrence here for cautions. Yes, we are, and that's not cool. I mean, eventually you'd think uh, we could work it out, but uh, Charlie just kind of kind of run into his demise right down there. He's the first one to really make any contact with the wall, though, so that's good. Everything's happening three and four, guys. You notice that? You Charlie's first truck race is the bad news. I mean, it's not uh, going to be a good memory for him for his first time out. <laughs> We're under caution number six here at the Advanced Auto Parts 250. We'll be back with more racing action. back to Martinsville Speedway. We take a look here at Travis Quapple who came in. He was second and all the leaders with the exception of Quapple stayed out that time, Barry. Well, it was time for him to come in. We don't know how this is going to work. And also Andy Houston came in. But these boys pitted at lap 60. They had a lot of laps on their tires and it paid off when they put tires on. We saw them move to the front. But now the question is, do the other guys Come in on another caution. Do they stay out? You only got about 90 to go. Let's go down to Ray and see what he's got. Well, Barry, this was really kind of their strategy. They wanted to pit with about 100 laps to go. Travis was saying his truck was very tight in the center, so they went down three rounds on the track bar, put four fresh tires on it, and this was really kind of their pre-race plan. They wanted to see a caution about now. With another 100 laps to go, they believe they can get back up through that track position with four fresh tires. Well, I have to agree with them. Barry, you know, we saw him move all the way from the middle of the pack up to the top five with, in, with just 40 laps pressure on his tires. So now he's got 100 to go, and he's got 20 lap better tires than everybody else in the field. Right. Well, be sure to tune into Speed for what is sure to be one of the most exciting races of the year when the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series makes their first visit to Lowe's Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina. The Hardys 200 live Friday, May 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Speed. That'd be fun to see those trucks in Charlotte. Oh, man, that's going to be an amazing, first amazing time. show. And fast. It's going to be fast. 
America's Michael, number one tailgate party. Uh, Michael Dolan pulls the pit tr or pace truck into the pits, and now Are leading away, ready? Chad Chaffin out Are front. Chad Chapman trying to work his way around the double zero of Ryan McGlynn as they work through turns one and two and down the back stretch they go. And you know, Michael, for that strategy to work for the 15 and the 16, they've got to have green. They can't have a lot of cautions. Don't you agree? I agree, but it can it can come at any point, Barry. If we run 80 laps right now, it'll be an advantage for them. Or if we have a couple cautions now and then run 80 laps for them, but they need that one big bomb green flag run in order to make this deal work. Three wide off two, battle for the lead. These trucks are crazy. Owner driver right here. Now he's saying, driver, get out of the way. The owner's <laughs> coming through. Well, he drove it down in there. I thought they were going to have contact. I don't know if Chad knew it had it in there or not. Bobby really, really on the throttle now. And they talked about this. Bobby Hamilton, when he gets out there, he's a driver. He's not an owner. Chad Chapman's a driver. Those guys are racing for the lead. I know Bobby's really proud of, proud of Chad right now, leading this race. You know, he wants to lead, but he also loves the fact that his teammates leading right now. Look I'll at Chad. Yeah, that's not giving him any leeway at all. They're running neck and neck right there. He says, no, you don't. You might be the team owner, but I got to write in this thing. Look at him. Look at him. This is only Chad Chapman's 11th truck series race, and so he's putting on Quite a show here for his boss, who's on the inside. I would say there's some radio communication going on right now because it's just about turned Bobby around off turn two. Well, they brought Ted Musgrave into the hunt too. Musgrave on the outside now, Bobby, trying to take over second place. It was really cool. Bobby and uh, Chad mixed it up a little bit, you know, earlier in the race, and I turned around to uh, Chad's wife, Cindy, and I said, uh, who's having more fun, Chad or Bobby right now? <laughs> Brenna Gaunt's having a lot of success. Two third place finishes in our last two races. The 62 Orleans Dodge of Brendan Gaunt running very well, currently sitting in fourth position. And as you said, watching those two veterans up in front battle back and forth. Man, it's just tough to complete a pass on the inside, Rich. You just can't hardly do it. Ray, what do you got? Yeah, Mike, Ray. Whenever you look at the number 62 truck, keep in mind his last pit stop was at 64. Now, Brendan said his truck was really loose, so they tried to change it with air presser. Guess what? It's still loose. Brendan's saying he's not good enough to get up there to run for the lead because he's still too loose. A guy who's been bouncing through the field today has been the 33 of Andy Petrie, and actually, he did it again just moments ago. Let's take a look. Looked like he got in the wall there with the right side of the truck. Is that what happens? Let's see here. Might get a little nudge here, Mike. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Sliding out of two. And and we're seeing uh, some of these guys getting a little excited. And like you had said, feathering the accelerator when you come out of the corner. Some of these guys are punching it. Well, look at Jody Lavender's truck. I mean, it's beat all the front ends all knocked off the back. So uh, he helped him out a little bit. It's not the first guy today. <laughs> yeah, he's the one that actually turned uh, Brian Rose when Schrader was in behind him. 46 truck, 46 Chevrolet, Dennis Setzer on the move. Amic horsepower. Let's go down to Ray. Well, Barry Dennis has been saying he really wanted to pit on that last caution, and, and Danny, his crew chief, said, no, we just cannot give up this track position. We may not have a truck that can win today, but they pitted last on lap 104. His tires are a little bit looser than what he started out with, but right now, he's saying not sure if he's got enough to go up there and run for the win either with Chad Chaff and Musgrave or Bobby. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, the way the truck handles dictates what you're going to do in the race. And uh, as that first run went along, it uh, got real tight in the center, and we were falling back. And uh, we were in jeopardy of going a lap down if it you know, kept going that way. So uh, we had to come in, make an adjustment, and go on. And uh, you know, the tires, they fell off enough where we looked like heroes there for a while. It was fun. My crew chief was kind of funny. He said, you need to get up on the top of that steering wheel and move forward, you know. And he said, uh, just don't hit DW, whatever you do. But uh, it was fun. Uh, he did a great job, you know. He kept his truck straight all day and turned in the center and he had good forward bite. The guy did a great job. You know, he's a legend in our sport, three-time Winston Cup champion, and it showed out there today. There you take a look. Kevin Harvick just went by your brother in the Tide 17. And they swap paint doing it, I guarantee you that. Plenty of room out the back. 
Harvick's got a great truck, came from a lap down, making his way through the field. DW will probably just try to hang on to that truck right now and follow Harvick up through there. If he'll he does, see he'll right now, yet, he'll see right yet. now what kind of pace he needs to set. That's the, one of the best trucks here. He'll need to keep up with that guy as he heads toward the front. You see on the left side of your screen there, a battle for fifth position. And that is between Brendan Gaughan and Rick Crawford. Brendan Gaughan, the 62 out in front, Rick Crawford and the 14 right behind him. Brendan Gaughan really loose. He was complaining about watch right here. The back end will step out. Of, he can't get on the throttle, Michael, at all until he's all the way straight off the corner. He's Crawford his, will get a run on him. He's got his hands full, but man, he's got a fast truck. He's able to use those old tires, a loose truck, and still stay up in the top five. Right in front of him, a great battle for third. Bobby Hamilton on the outside in the Dodge, square D Dodge number four. And on the inside, the 46 of Dennis Setzer. Now, Setzer has shown he can run short tracks. He's <laughs> the winner a week or a month ago, and he's battling again. This there. is the truck that everybody at the start of this race said is going to come to the front. That's what the Dodge boys were talking about. He said, well, we're good, but that 46, you know, Dennis is going to come up, and here he comes. That was exactly right. In the garage area yesterday afternoon, everybody said the best truck here was the number 46, and that Chevrolet is looking good. Now, this cat here, the number two truck, Jason Leffler, he's been all over the place, Barry, but he's run strong all day. Ray, what's the story on Jason? Well, Jason's very tight in the center, Michael, and they tried to fix that on their previous pit stop. He said it didn't do any good. Still very tight in the center for these guys. They took a rubber out and changed the track bar, but it didn't do much of a change. He said it really hasn't changed much since the start of the race. Well, that's not good, but he's been able, he's been exciting. Battle right here, it's the fifth great battle with Brendan John and Rick Crawford. And I'll tell you what impressed me about Brendan John. They run this operation out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Now that's a lot of traveling. There you talk to Brendan, he's talking to, he's talking to championship. He says, I'm gonna just be cool. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna finish these races up in the top five. And he's been our most consistent guy really. I've seen him run Winston West. He's got a great career ahead of him. Carl Edwards in the number 99 running very well as he looks to get Rick Crawford in his sights. Let's head down to the pits and fill. Carl just took uh, seventh position from his teammate John Wood. Carl's driving the same truck JR32 that he drove at Darlington. Had such a great run going started way back and drove up in the top five but until he had overheating problem. He pitted for four tires on lap 104. Talked to Doug Richard a minute ago. He's not sure if they're going to pit at all. He said it all depends. Right now we're inside of 75 laps to go. So a track position is so critical here. A lot of these guys may have planned on pitting, but they may end up staying out. His teammate John Wood now, on the other hand, he pitted on lap 104, but he only raised the track bar because he's been tight center off. He last put tires on on lap 61, so he will have almost 200 laps on his tires if he stays out. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the 50 pit, but the 99 may stay out. John Wood currently sitting in ninth position and right behind him, the number nine of Rich Bickle, the 1997 champion of this race. And you see him on the outside of Harvick as Harvick tries to make the pass on Bickle. Let's go down to Ray. Well, guys, keep in mind, three wins for Rich Bickle, and one of those came right here at Martinsville back in 1997. He led 204 laps that day, but today he's driving chassis three, which is an old truck of his from a long, long time ago. Now, this team is excited about going to Charlotte because they are going to build a brand new truck. Guess what? They haven't started on it, and that race is in three weeks. But Bickle says, let's get the job done today. He knows he can run really well here at Martinsville. He finished fourth here in Winston Cup back in 1998. Little bump in there, you saw John Wood actually tag the wall as he came out of the turn. And we see your leaders out in front. And we are at the start finish line. Ted Musgrave has started three races now. His best finish, 22nd. We'll see how he does today. Welcome back to Martinsville, Virginia for the Advanced Auto Parts 250. We are under caution number seven. And here is why. Not DW. No. Well, kind of. Well, Rich involved. Bickle, the nine, watch the 50, gets him right in the door, turns him. Now watch the 17. DW tries outside, but uh, oh, wrong oh. place, right time, Michael. Mm. Now, Michael, I want to ask you a question. You can see again here. Okay. Nine up yeah, underneath the Better pit. look right here. Looked like the 50 just tried to dime in the corner a little bit, and the nine wasn't expecting it, and DW got punted into the wall. Okay, back to my question. Let's hear it. You got. You got, you got 43 trained professionals tomorrow in your race. Now we've run 185 laps here at Martinsville. Now do you think you guys, I know you got 43 cars out there and we got 36 trucks, but do you think 
you guys and forget the last altercation because it was minor will have less damage in these guys right here that's how good these kids are and veterans in the craftsman truck series now that's not a lot of damage here at martinsville for 185 laps and i've seen you guys run i like watching this stuff i think it's fun to see the trucks race they do a great job they challenge each other but it looks like they give each other a little bit of breaks you know they might knock them sideways but they don't knock them out that was him and somebody got together and uh spun him out and then when i went by he backed up into me and uh and i thought it hurt the truck but it just hit it in the rear and and bounced it off the wall, just, just didn't hurt a thing. And they come in, put tires on it, went back out, went to racing some more. Good action here at Martinsville today. Chad Chatham. Yeah. Chad Chatham leading the pack down the back stretch. Ted Musgrave, again, we had talked about him going to break, has started here three times, twice on the pole, but his best finish has been 22nd. He's definitely looking to improve on that right now as he said second. Yeah, and I'm sorry, Rick, but I was going to say, I guarantee you, if that four truck gets back to the 18, he's going to let him know who the owner is. <laughs> That's about right. Harvick has come from a lap down, is solidly inside the top 10, has one of the fastest trucks here. It'll be interesting to see what happens to him as we go forward. And another guy that's just been quietly doing his job is Carl Edwards. He's fought his way in the top 10 as well and will be strong the rest of the day. And there is a rookie that Roush Racing picked up right before the season, and he's really wowed everyone, even you guys in the Winston Cup garage. Well, you just like, you like it when a guy comes from seemingly nowhere and shows the ability and the talent to get the job done. Carl has done that. He's fast, and today here at Martinsville, where you got to be careful, you got to be conservative with your equipment, you can't use it all up. He's quietly marched himself up to the sixth position and is as fast as the leaders right now, so you just when you see talent like that. You know what you got right there? You look, you got a little donut on the back right there. You've got one on the other side, but there's nothing on the front. He had not on anybody. No, I like the way he's gone about his business today. He's got a really good truck. He can dive at the bottom of the turn. You don't see a lot of people hugging the whole line. Carl's been able to do so. We came here with no real expectations. I hadn't raced at a track like this yet. You know, Bakersfield was as close as we've been. And Doug Richard and uh, Steve McCain and those guys worked real hard to get the setup like we wanted. We tested. John Wood and I worked great together in testing. And um, the four tires were, were the right way to go. We just were really fast at the end. We're inside 60 laps, 59 laps to go in this one. And guys that are moving up to the front. Take a look now as we drop through the field. Travis Quapple in the 16 truck currently sitting in eighth position behind him in the number two is jason leffler and harvick right there in front there you see the asc dodge of jason leffler and the ultra motorsports team doing very well today as Wapple. we look out the back of his truck oh sideways out the back of the truck if <laughs> you see david Starr in the spears manufacturing number 75 currently holding on to the number 10 spot so there's your top 10 currently in this one as we close in on 193 laps of racing. Oh boy, the traffic jam, the 08 there, the 57 just made a contact. Right in the middle of Andy Petrie. Look, Look at the back. back. That's 08 of Jody Lavender. He, has, take, he has used that baby up today. He sits in, in 14th oh. position, but I tell you what, NASCAR's got to be taking a very close look at that because that could be dangerous that that comes off the truck. Well, we just heard they got a black flag on that truck because the back end's about to fall off. Look here, though, right now, Dennis sets in the truck. Everybody says he's going to go to the front. He's trying to go to the front, and I think he's going to make it down here. It's battle for a second. Dennis sets are very strong in short track racing, and you see it right now as he works his way around Ted Musgrave as they come to the line. Five, six, and one. Four, four, six, and one. Great race. Was able to complete the pass. You know, we haven't seen him be able to do that, Doris. They get on no. the bottom and get hung up. Eight weeks are better than four, right? But Dennis got the job <laughs> done right there. He just leaned right in there. Chet Chapman out in front. Let's go down to Ray. Well, guys, keep in mind uh, the Craftsman Truck Series finishes under a green-white checkered uh, under most circumstances. Chad Chaffin can go 252 laps today. So these guys are hoping if he's able to stay out there that we get a green flag finish right at 250. If we add a caution close to the end and they have to run a couple extra laps, they'll be out of fuel. 252, the most they can run today. And very 
He mentions 252. Now that's that's got to be a little bit of a they're guessing a little bit on the weight of the gas can, right? When they get done to make sure that they got all the gas in. Yes, they are. And as the pace gets slower, he won't burn that much fuel. And if the truck were tight or something, he would burn a lot of fuel. They're calculating that, but I guarantee you, he's not coming in. That's when you <laughs> shake that thing around and get all you can. Black flag, Jody Lavender. I tell you, this kid's done a good job. He's a hot shoe out of Florence, South Carolina, and a good little racer. Don't start. look now, but here he comes. Dennis Setzer moving the inside of Chad Chapman. 46 will take the lead down here, Mike, I'm sure. And Michael, I was telling these guys at Bakersfield that Dennis has that truck hillbilly, and they didn't know I was, what I was talking about. Oh, you think he's got a left front spring laid up in there, huh? Oh, yeah. I know he does. Look at the chat. He's going to try to keep the pin down, but Dennis is just too good. This truck will march from here, Barry. You watch him. He'll put a straightaway on these guys before they know what happened. There's some faster trucks, though, Meyer, back in the field. Harvick's coming through. He's got pressure tires. And, oh! Saw it coming right here. We got a caution. Carl Edwards, he got into uh, Brendan Gunn and spun him out. Well, he got Quapa with Got Quapa with him. I was going to tell you that the 16 had the freshest tires of the guys up toward the front and looked to be, looked to be in good shape to get to the to the battle for the lead and then got to, had to stop in that wreck. I was looking right at that, and the 99 just, just got right in the side of Brandon and turned him around. He jumped over the curb. It looked like he tried to get off of him and get as low as he could. I don't know. I didn't see it, Barry, but a lot of times when a guy gets up on the curb, he's trying not to hit him. He's trying to stay off of him, but uh, Brendan didn't know he was down there, and they got together. Let's see if that's what happened. When you're in the air, it's hard to drive, isn't it? Oh, he's in the air, too. There. That's exactly what he did, Michael. He tried to get down there to not try to hit him. You know, he tried to not hit him, and in doing so, jumped off the curb and went right in the side of him. That curb's to keep him off that grass. That curb was for when Ron Hornaday ran this truck series because he had hooked that left front tire and go right around it like a train. And poor Travis Popple, I mean, he had nothing to do, nowhere to go. But he got out of it unscathed, at least. He just lost some spots. Let's take a look. We're on board with Bobby Hamilton now, and it's just behind him. There, you see Carl Edwards trying to get inside. He just got pinched down up on the curb, bounced into Brenda Gar. I think Carl realized late in the going that he didn't have room to complete the pass, so he tried to bail, hit the curb, ran into him. Bad deal. Bad deal for Travis Quaffle. We'll be back with more racing after this. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 is brought to you by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR and the NHRA. By Advanced Auto Parts. Around these parts, trouble doesn't stand a chance. We're ready in advance, Advanced Auto Parts. And by new muscle shoes from Red Wing. So comfortable, you can't take them off. Racing continues here at Martinsville. And out front, short track ace, Dennis Setzer in the 46. Three wide, almost up to five. Two more, come on, come on, put two of them up here and save me. <laughs> Three wide. Dorsey, they're getting close. Now come on, boys. Do it. You see, we're on board right now with Daryl Waltrip, who DW's moved up into seventh position. Oh, oh, top ten. Rick Crawford banging off the wall. I tell you something, Jason Leffert, too, has not been able to hold that truck down. Let's see how Daryl handles it. If we can get a shot out of that thing, here we go. The two will not stay down in the center, and Daryl's going to capitalize. He knows that. That's where he wants to run, too, is down on the bottom. So yep. if the two can't keep her down, that works out good for Daryl. But it's hard, hard, hard to complete a pass on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, the thing Daryl's got going for him, if the two's tight, it'll hurt the engine up off the corner. Ah, oh, he just decided we got to got another caution, guys. Another caution at the zero zeros in trouble here. Ryan McGlynn, double alt. And double again, alt. it turns three and four. We have caution number nine coming out here. Hey, bud, right? And right, hey, look McGlynn. at 50. Watch the 50. John Wood trying to get a lap back. He's coming on, boys. He's coming on. He's got to be careful. Whoa. Ryan McGlynn tried to turn around there. There now. Here John Wood yeah. back on the lead lap. Close. Make an unscheduled stop while ago, guys, and, and lost a couple laps. I couldn't wait to get to the front to race Dennis for the win. And um, uh, lap truck there got us three wide one time. We hit the wall come back about 10 laps later I got three wide with Darrell Waltrip and I went over and told him after the race so I said we had some fun today I said but I, I beat and bang with the best he did them based on what I'm but these other guys have got if I can just get around this couple more of them I think I got a shot you got a shot man we don't need to nose on that truck now I don't want you to wreck nobody's attention but don't let them suckers hold you up either now go for another break. we got to go Darrell it must be time you're getting aggressive out there 
Got the thing up to six. Is it up under you? You like the way it's handling right now, late in the race? Just a little bit of more time here. How many laps did it go? You have 40 to go. 40 to go, and five guys stand between you and the return to glory. Was that a little dramatic? I think I can. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. Larry Mack, Michael, owner, team owner. I was just wondering, you got your radio fixed up there? Are you doing your spotting all right now? My wires is plugged in and my battery's changed. Sounds like the Leroy's Boys Racing Team is a well-oiled machine here at Martinsville with 50 to 40 to go. Not too bad, not too bad. We take a look at why we're under caution as Ryan McGlynn climbs out of the double zero. And you look back here. He's up on the top. Up, see what happens here. Trying to stay that way, but they got three wide uh, trying to do the five for me. And they, uh, 99, did it again. You know, look at that. Carl Edwards down the bottom hit the same curve and hit the 88. And it got in him. Don't, That's twice in a row. I don't think five wide is, is going to work here. Well, that come was on. three. That, well, yeah, that look, was three see, there's tight. room right here. But look, 99. Same mistake as before, Michael. Same exact mistake. He keeps getting pinched down, though. No, that wasn't the same mistake because he didn't spin out that time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Same technique, then. Let's go with the technique. Let's head down trackside and right. Well, guys, I got a question for you. I want to know what you think about this strategy. Dave McCarty, the crew chief of the Spears Chevrolet that David Starr drives, said, we're not good enough to win, so they came in at lap 202 under our last caution put a half a rubber in the right rear and put on four fresh tires. He said, listen, we don't care about the body on this truck. We can knock it off. We're going to work our way back to the front. We weren't good enough to win. We came here to win, so they pitted. Only 40-some laps to go. Can they get to the front where they're starting now? I don't think so. I think it's too little time and uh, too far to go. But I do like his strategy. They were falling back through the field. Now they can be the aggressor. When you get wrecked at Martinsville, it's because you're not fast enough. People are passing you and they'll run into you. When you got a truck that's passing people, it's hard to get wrecked, so you got to like his uh, strategy. There are 20 trucks that are still on the lead lap right now, and so David Stark taking a pit gamble. We'll see if it pays off when we come back to Martinsville. DW is a lot of fun. I think I pounced into him a little bit uh, before we got started today on, on pit lane just to make sure he knew I was starting behind him. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, was, I was just glad that he made it through all 250 laps without falling out the side of the truck. Let's go down to the pits and fill. Just talked to Gary Showalter a moment ago, Andy Houston's crew chief. He said they're good to go. They pitted on lap 155 for four tires. Said the truck's a little bit tight, mostly because the front end's been beat up. But they've got a great truck going, currently in ninth position, looking for a good, strong top ten. They come back to the green flag. 35 to go, and uh, Dennis Setcher. 46 truck out front, right where we left off, and he is strong. Chad Chaffin didn't come up to speed very good. He got a good shot from Ted Musgrave. I don't know if he missed a gear, maybe on the upship, but he, uh, he stumbled and got hit from behind pretty good. The 86 of TJ Bell is the lap traffic that they're working around right now as they go through one and two. You've got so many good trucks right there. Now. Dennis has got to clear a racetrack, but back to Daryl. Petrie. Yeah, oh, Petrie, yeah. He yeah, spun out in turn two. First time we've seen that today. Yeah. We don't need these caution flag laps. Daryl's got, Daryl, well, this is my opinion. I don't think we need these caution flag laps. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's got the freshest tires of the truck toward the front, so it'd be interesting to see if he had a little bit of time to run, could he could he get the job done? Hopefully NASCAR will throw this thing back to green right quick. Sets her though, but if any, no one's gonna catch him. I mean, he is way fast, and you know, if that truck doesn't change dramatically over the like, next 30 laps, he's gonna drive off into the sunset, I believe, but there's gonna be a fierce battle trying to get to him. And here we come again to the beauty of this series, green, white, checker. And no matter how fast you are, a lot of guys have a chance when it happens, and it happens a lot in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Michael, you yourself had mentioned earlier about how Kevin Harvick's number six is running very well. well he's in fifth. He's still got to be in striking distance, you would think. He is, but the problem is, Rick, it's, it's, he's got to get by great trucks to get a chance to get to Dennis, and Dennis is so fast out there by himself, it's going to be a very difficult task to complete. 
We take a look back now and why we're under caution here. Andy Petrie in the number 33 having troubles negotiating through one and two. He tried to five wide, see? Didn't work. That's Terry Cook that got in the back. Oh, stacked everybody up. Brendan, Brendan was gone. Brendan gone, got uh, in the back. Of Brendan hit him, and now Brendan's gone, see? That's you. Brendan's gone. They're working with Dorsey, though, Barry. They're trying for They've got to save me, they, boys, please. They were going for it right there. The, <laughs> the foul line. Call us, Michael. Well, the 29 gets into the back of the 72 of Terry Cook. Or Terry Cook gets in Randy McDonald. Everybody's going along nicely, but then the 29 lost his momentum, bunched things up, and uh, it's the five back theory. Usually when something goes wrong, about the fifth truck back winds up getting in trouble because it gets bunched up to that person, and then he gets hit and spins out. I'll tell you who did really good on reading that thing and saying that was Kenny Schrader who was on the outside of that whole deal and moved up to the wall and just snuck by it. I can't go with the five wide, but I can go with the five back. And I heard you try to <laughs> try to justify that on the show, that five back that's, is where it normally uh, catches somebody. That's a new one for me now. Five yeah. back. We call it the stack up in Road Ridge, but I guess five back will work. Well, Here we speaking, go, guys. Speaking of back, we're going back to racing here as Mike Dolan has taken the pit truck, pace truck back down on pit road. Are you ready? We'll see if anybody can hold on. He's going to set to bring the green. Come on, Robert. Robert Press is going to be trying to get a lap back here if he can now. That would make things interesting. And yeah, he's 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 running blocker here for Setzer almost because he's going to try hard to get this thing back. Look and at We'll do what it takes to get it back. That's a bad news. If he stays between uh, behind Setzer like that, the guys behind him have no chance of catching him. We got about 30 to go here. We got a heck of a race, guys. This battle for seconds going to get real ugly here in a minute. I guarantee it. No wonder there's a record crowd today. These guys go at it. I like being up here on top Ooh. checking it out. They almost took our speed camera off again right off the wall like last week. Michael had mentioned record crowd. 41,000 fans in attendance here at Martinsville. The largest crowd to watch a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on a Saturday afternoon. Look at this. Look at this right here. Rick Crawford. Muscles left are out of the way. And here comes Carl. Not to be denied. Raced back into the top ten. He's not done. Carl Edwards knows all too well the curb in turn three. Look at DW right in there with Kevin Harvick and who's beaten all over the side of Bobby Hamilton. Look at him going to the inside. Now DW watching it. Harvick's down on the bottom of the racetrack inside of Hamilton. And you see DW, you see the front of that truck. He's starting to move a little farther outside. Oh, the high side. Leffler, in the meantime, just paid back uh, <laughs> Carl Edwards. Here's the high side, Darrell. Come on. Oh. 25 to go. No pressure from behind. 45 feet. That, that's a good feeling, isn't it, Michael? No pressure from behind, especially yeah. here. Especially at Martinsville or Bristol. You never hear that. When you're over 50 years old, it's the 20 to go. <laughs> that's a good thing, too. <laughs> No one behind you and 20 to go feels good for me. This is 20 to go. Tell me that. Or lie to me about it. Great battle for second between Ted Musgrave and the 18 of Chad Chaffin. So the one in the 18 battling for second. And while that's going on, again, the Axiom 46 of Dennis Setzer continues to put distance between himself. Wow, front straight away. Oh, I think we just got my five wide. I think we did. <laughs> Dorsey took his glasses off and now no, he's on five you. wide. Kenny Schrader's in the middle of all this. It was big. You guys didn't see it, but I, I'm vindicated. I promise you. Well, Look you at know, Brandon gone. The whole front of the 62. Now he's, he's really got some ram air now, guys. 75's going around into turn one, boys. David Starr backwards in the grass. Wow. I'm telling you guys, this green-white checker's looking good. Oh, here comes Robert. He did it. He got it back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's stack up behind him. Keep going up. Come on. Come on. He did it. Tell you what, that was smart for Dennis Setzer to let him by because there was so much racing going on there with, with him coming up. It was a good idea to let him pass. And I want to show you something else here if the camera runs long enough. Watch uh, Kevin Harvick. He races back to the in, to the start finish line inside of Bobby Hamilton. NASCAR doesn't smile too much upon you racing back to the caution flag, but it's so difficult to pass. He was inside of Hamilton as they come off four, and he continued that battle all the way to the start finish line. There's Andy Houston with the left front completely knocked down. That all happened on this front straightaway when they got. Uh, the only reason it didn't spin was because they were on the wall from side to side all the way across. There's yeah. nowhere to spin to. And he had to come in. He came in too early. Pit road was closed, but he, he had no uh, option there. You'll tear the brake lines off and everything else. 
Andy Houston's truck there dragging the whole uh, front end. Had a little fire under it. We're going to have to watch for that. He's yeah, come Nelly, on the pit lane now. Yeah, getting hot in here, as Nelly would say, right? And you know what? Real Andy's hot. having a great run. He, well, it was. He was. Having he a great run up to that point. He did a great job down this front straightaway. Like Barry said, he hit the outside wall and the inside wall. Check this out right here. They're racing back to the caution. Harvick's keeping the pressure on the four truck, trying to get around him. And then, but you see, he did slow down. You know, he didn't go flying down into turn one where there was trouble. But that just shows you right there, Rick, how difficult it is to complete a pass. He'd been under Bobby several times, couldn't close the deal, decided he'd just force it back to the start finish line, see if he could get him there. And Bobby Hamilton's driver Chad Chapman was right in front of him so he had to slow down and almost allowed Kevin Harvick to make the pass. Actually they're showing on the official scoring that Kevin Harvick is in front of Bobby Hamilton. Let's take a look from Daryl Waltrip's vantage point. The caution is coming out right about now and so here is the race back to the caution flag. This is the back stretch. You stay out front and stays pretty clean. And, you know, as you alluded to earlier, that, uh, you know, my finishes here have been 24th and 22nd or whatever. And I told you I was going to just be patient, save the truck, and, uh, you know, bring that thing back maybe next week or run it again. So being up front makes a big difference. You can uh, give a little bit and don't have to worry about sliding back and have six or seven of them get by you and have to beat your way back through. Well, brakes are very important here at Martinville. Martinsville. And we're going to take a break ourselves and be back with more racing action. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250. And there's a lady who's probably excited about this, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, that's Daryl's wife, Stevie. And uh, Stevie's kind of in control of this situation. She decides when and where Daryl can race. And Martinsville's on the approved list. And he's having a good time, having a great run. Ran his fastest lap on lap 224. Coming back to the green flag. See if he can't race his way back into the top five. Let's head down to the pits and fill. Yeah, you guys, Michael, you guys were making fun of Daryl maybe getting tired, as you just mentioned. The fastest lap he's run all day was on lap 223, 224, so he's saving the best for last, but he's going to run out of time, I think. Little bumping going on there as Rick Crawford came right up behind DW. Look at Carl Edwards. He's got the bit between his teeth. He's on the inside of DW, working right now to the inside. And he, he we know he likes it down there. He, he's all on it. The problem is Dennis sets her way out in front of the Axiom 46. Can they catch it? Chad Chapman's the closest one to it. And got a lap truck between them, Michael. It's going to be tough to do, isn't it? I don't think they catch him with all this racing going on from behind. The second place battle got about five people. And look at here. Edwards again working to the inside. They were three wide coming into turns one and two. Here's a great battle for second place. Chad Chapman on the outside, Ted Musgrave on the inside. All right, the lap truck of 72 is going to be a factor. You see it coming in the picture right here. They're going to split him. Let's go. Watch Kevin Harvick, too. He sees that lap truck. He knows that the high line is going to be faster. Right go. now, they all get up into it, though. You know what? <laughs> Dennis sets the look in the rearview mirror and says, I'm out of here. You guys have fun. I'll see you. See you wouldn't want to be you, right? That's it. Checking out. I watch this on TV. There they go on the high side, making the pass on the slower lap traffic. Chad Chapman, Ted Musgrave, Kevin Harvick, 2-3-4 in the order right now as they're trying to reel in Dennis Setzer. And the guy that's on the move is Carl Edwards. <laughs> that 99 truck has got some brakes on it. Well, he's not afraid to drive it down in there, is he? I mean, he gets it down. He's getting it down in the corner and making its turn when he gets there. I don't think he's using much brake. I mean, he is really sailing off in there. Watch him dive in the inside of this four truck. He won't be able to stand it. <laughs> no, you know, here we've seen him dive on there the inside is. and he finds the curb too many times, but he tucks the nose on the inside as they go down the back stretch. Man, that's just a little trial down. and error. Bill, talk about his brakes. What do you, what's the story on Carl Edwards? I'm, I'm telling you, Michael, he has some great brakes. You know, I talked a little while ago to Doug Richards that they weren't sure if they were going to stop or not. Didn't want to give up the track position. Then they did stop. I said, why did you stop? He said, well, we just felt like we were backsliding a little bit. The 16 really made some good time on fresh tires, so we felt like we needed to gamble. You remember Bakersfield a few weeks ago. He gambled on changing two tires. It didn't work for him. This time, maybe changing four tires is going to work for him. Well, he's making it fun for us. He is cutting through the field. And he is Mr. Brake. And he right is. now, Kevin Harvick making a move for third under Musgrave. Let's see if he can pull it off. That Dodge is potent on the outside. Watch this. That's some pawns right there, boys. <laughs> he's getting a lot of forward bite. He gets it going. But Carl Edwards, man, the man on the brake. Look at him. He's right now working on Harvick. 
at St. Jude Trucks. He's going to be there. With 10 laps of racing to go, we've got to remember, Ted Musgrave is going for that win from the pole. The Craftsman win from the pole. Kevin Harvick on the inside of him. Again, that battle for third. Fourth is held by Carl Edwards. Fifth is Bobby Hamilton. Actually moved back to sixth. Bobby Hamilton has never finished out of the top five yet this year. Might be 12 or 13 to go. You never know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ted's truck was real good in the middle, and, and uh, my truck, we worked hard on it to, to make it work on the bottom of the racetrack in happy hour. And, and uh, that paid off for us today. Just uh, couldn't quite get enough grip up off the corners. Great racing, Chad Chaffin trying to reel in the number 46 of Dennis Setzer. Well, I take that back. He's not got a battle. No, he on. does. But right behind him, this battle's going on. Dodge is strong on the outside. Harvey keeps looking the inside, and then forward, right behind it. It's Setzer. He's our leader. And Harvick's been working on the bottom of that racetrack. You see his truck get loose there when he cuts to the bottom. It's very hard to get forward by it off the bottom of the turn. Carl Edwards has run out of steam. His charge looks to be slowing up somewhat. I'm going to say, Michael, you can only use those brakes that hard for that so long. That pedal starts to fade. You start having to pump it up between the straightaways. Daryl's challenging Bickle. Daryl slipped back to ninth on the restart. Carl got by him, opened the door for uh, Crawford and Bickle to go by. Daryl's turning the heat back up on Bickle, trying to move up through the top ten. Chad Chapman's got trouble. Chad Chapman pulling in the pits, guys. Early, uh, one of our leaders today. Wow. Was in second and has to pull into the pits. That drops him back. A great run for Chad Chapman. Is he out of gas? We had, we had talked about that earlier. They thought he could go 252. I think they gambled wrong. That team has had nothing but bad luck this year, and he was doing such a good job here today. And I'll tell you what, guys, going back to the leader, you see Dennis Setzer right there. Let's give, a, let's give a tip of the hat to Bill Amick and his engines. They are very, very strong, not only here, but in other series where they run restrictor plates. That, that truck is running great. Dennis just does perfect, a great job, perfect job on these short half-mile racetracks. We saw him last oh. time out win, and now here he is leading in. Boy, I tell you, we just had a big, big mess in the back straight away, and it had to do with uh, three and a half. Wide, three, three, David Starr's in that deal. Jason Leffler, Kenny Schrader, they're all bumping the bank. You see DW almost getting on the inside. Rich Pickle there. About, he's, I think he's ready to move guys apart. This is the race I was talking about, boys. These guys are hitting each other like crazy. Kenny Schrader's in the middle of that. You got Matt Crafton in there, David Starr, Jason Leffler. DW just got by Rich Bickle. You see, oh, bumping and banging there. Oh, here he goes, here he goes. Michael, I was just going to say, if Darrell could see the rest of that truck, he'd go ahead and use the nose, don't you think? Well, he got on the brake sets. You see, in front of that thing dropped down. Boom! Put on the wheel, baby. Here Coming back come. at you. White flag just Drop flew, gentlemen. White flag. Dennis Setzer out in front as he has a straightaway and a half to go. Dennis Setzer in the Axiom Chevrolet looking to repeat his win here a year ago as well as go two in a row on short tracks. It's Dennis Setzer taking the checkered flag. I tip of the hat to those guys. I mean, strong, very strong in Bakersfield. Whoa, trouble in front straight. Candy got, that's been going on for three laps. It was David Starr and Kenny Schrader. They've done that six times in two laps. <laughs> they ran for 30 minutes right there, guys. Action Chevrolet, 46 of Dennis Setzer and that team doing a great job. And like you had mentioned, short track ace, Dennis Setzer coming out on top again. I think uh, Barry Dotson hit on a key point too. You gotta have a lot of horsepower to win at Martinsville. You know, it's important to handle getting the thing up off the corners is key, but Bill Amick and his team puts great engines in that Chevrolet. Well, I've got to congratulate you, Michael. You, as a team owner, you've just finished seventh at Martinsville. Wow, that was fun too. I never, I never, uh, Wow! Check out the burnout he's doing. As Dennis Setzer continues to have a lot of fun on the front stretch in front of this 41,000 full fan crowd. We will head to break and be back for celebration in victory lane. Welcome back to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Advanced Auto Parts 250 Post Race Show presented by Craftsman. And the excitement continues in victory lane as Dennis Setzer jumps out of the action 46. And to talk to him, we go down to Ray Dunlap. 
Thanks, Rick. That was uh, pure domination today. Victory number nine for you, 100 for Chevrolet. But, Dennis, all I heard on the radio all day was this truck's junk. How in the world did you get it to the front and keep it there? Well, I got a good guy in the pits. Danny Gill made some great adjustments right there. We made that stop, man. He dialed us in. He made adjustments. Said he's going to come in a little while. And I was still crying and complaining, but... Uh, you know, it did, about 25, 30 laps after that deal. It might have had something to do with talent, <laughs> just a little bit. That's Charles Morgan, the owner of this truck. And, uh, Dennis, a year ago you had to come from 33rd. A little bit easier today, but there was a lot of pretty crazy racing out there at Martinsville. I don't know about easier today, man. We had it pretty tough today. These guys were really good up here. But, uh, you know, our little Axiom Chevrolet Silverado, that was the 100th win for Chevrolet. Second one for the new 2004, 2003 new nose on these things. Man, these things are going to be good. Two in a row for us. Bro. How about that? Hey, good job. Not, not too bad. These guys pretty happy down here. And, guys, keep in mind that he finished 28th at Darlington, but two victories in a row will put him right back in a tight points race. We're going to take a look here at the unofficial results. Dennis Setzer again coming home. That's his second win of the season, his second win right here. Ted Musgrave, his best finish here at Martinsville in the second place finish there for Ted Musgrave. Kevin Harvick, Kevin Harvick in the uh, finishing third, a, a veteran here of the Winston Cup moving into this field. Yeah, Jake, Jason Leffler, pretty good run right there with a tight truck all day long. Yeah, David Starr, I think a very good run for young Matt Crafton. Matt uh, Brennan gone there, you know, didn't have his best finish day. Ran good all weekend long, just at the end there, they fell apart for him. And the last two laps for David Starr and Kenny Schrader, Matt Crafton. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> that looked like that Talladega. They were pushing each other down the straightaway and bouncing off each other. It looked like we were, went back to last week. We just kind of put our heads together a little bit last night, and the guys changed a lot of stuff, and... You know, I got a smart crew. That's what the nice thing about Team Mopar is that we can uh, come over adversity. And, you know, like when, just before qualifying, I think we were 8th or 10th on the board. We'd get the pole by a lot of changes. Same thing uh, yesterday. Happy hour. Weren't real good. Bunch of changes. Here we are. Well, there's a lot of guys uh, still on the bottom, and, and the good trucks were, you know, could run both places. And, uh, you know, uh, I did most of my passing on the bottom of the racetrack, and that's what we worked on yesterday and today in happy hours. Towards the end, we were really fast. Um, I apologize to Brendan Gaughan and, um, and Matt Crafton. I did not in any way mean to, to rub them out of the way. I just committed, and there was nowhere to go. I jumped the curb and everything. We missed it just a little bit today, and we our very first set of tires was our softest set of tires, spring rate size, uh, spring rate-wise, and, and the other two sets that they give you, that they allot you, we can't swap them around from the tire truck. What they had you was a lot stiffer spring rate, and it pushed on that set, and we was just scared of death coming to pits. I really thought I had a truck good enough to be in the top three or four. And uh, lap traffic and just trying to get there never really worked in our favor. About the time we get racing real good, to have a caution. And uh, then I got up there to those first four or five, and I said, hmm, they're a little bit tougher than I thought they were going to be. So, uh, you know, I was holding back a little, and unfortunately, I think they were too. And so uh, I, I, I'm pretty happy with what we did. We got kicked, you know, kicked back there a couple of spots uh, with guys better tires, but overall, I'm tickled with what we did. To continue to bring you all of the action here from Speed, and we'll be with you next time at Lowe's.